Welcome everyone, welcome to another preview. This is Metal Canyon and we'll be checking out a game called High Fleet by Konstantin Koshutin. I hope I am not completely butchering the poor man's name. If I am, I apologize. This is a game created by a tiny team. I believe it's like four people or something. Don't quote me on that. And I will also admit something else. I have never heard of this High Fleet game. Uh, until a few days ago. I saw it on Steam, I checked out the screenshots and videos and some of the gameplay description and I thought to myself, I need this in my life. Also, before we begin, please, please, please be aware if you are sense if you are photosensitive, if you have any kind of um, problems with flashing lights, flickering and stuff like that, this game is full of it, as you can see. Apparently, I also don't quote me on that. Apparently, you will be able to tone this down. But right now, do not watch this video if you have any sort of problems with that. Um, you know, because there's plenty of that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's go to the campaign. Apparently, it's called Papa. I did not name that save game, but I've got a bonus of zero and a progress of 59%. No idea. The watch reports a squadron approaching. Understood. I'm on my way. Piotr, Grand Duke, Admiral. Well, you have my congratulations, gentlemen. The campaign has proven to be a great success so far. And I am confident, Admiral, that we owe this success to the Duke's talents. The Admiral looks at you without saying a word. How did your talks with Prince Fazil go? I hope you followed your orders to the letter. Affirmative, Admiral. Bing! We got a plus one. Good! Our next target is the city of Ur. We will join Skobelev's squadron there and begin our advance toward northern Gerrit. You've proven your mettle, Grand Duke. I will entrust you with the mission to seize Ur by force. The cruiser Diana will, and several intrepid class frigates will be transferred to your command. Thank you for your confidence, Admiral. Alright, so we get more ships. But I know this is all sort of in the middle of something. I will explain very, very quickly. Or I will explain very soon, I should say. Good, I shall not detain you any longer then. Pyotr Ign Ignatievich, Grand Duke. Alright, so, before we begin, let me just say that this game is shocking. Shockingly good. Most of the time. Now, the... The one thing, the first thing that, that caught my eyes was the looks of the game. This game looks fantastic. And I'm not just talking about this old school, very detailed UI here. And by the way, if you thought this was all for show, you're wrong. Pretty much all of this, apart from a few tidbits here and there, has some sort of a purpose. I think this is a missile radar warning system, actually. Uh, so yeah, everything has its purpose here. Some of the stuff I haven't yet touched yet um but basically it happens in a fictional world very much akin to dune i feel um it gives me very dune like uh, vibes uh with the people with with uh you know the ships and stuff like that and it's sort of like an apocalyptic apocalyptic setting as well there's you know dunes and sand everywhere and just war constantly so the premise of the game is you fight in these giant ships and i mean giant because if you go to the ships um go like this if you go to the ships in this city oh it's raining lovely i've got them parked here you have to park them yourself by the way but see this it looks like a small little ship but then you realize that it has a crew of 60 down here so yeah, let me go back to uh, the graphics. I apologize in advance because I'll probably be all over the place with my explanation and descriptions as I always am. But um, <laughs> there's just so much to tell and so much good. Uh, first of all, like I said, the graphics. I absolutely adore good pixel graphics. Now, again, I'm not entirely sure, but I think there is no 3D stuff in this game. I think it's all 2D, but holy moly, in, in a few moments when we go to combat, you will see just how good it looks uh, in combat. There's so much going on, and, you know, this is not just for show. Every little thing here has some sort of a 
uh, has some sort of a purpose. So, for example, this is armor. Uh, there's there's some stuff that has no image, by the way. I think that's probably still being worked on because it's about a week until release, until full release of this game. Uh, but yeah, never mind that. So, for example, here we have the hull, which gives us extra durability. Uh, it's sometimes really difficult to see uh, what you want to click on because you cannot really uh, zoom in or out. And, you know, if you're, if you're new to the game, well, it's going to be quite tricky. For example, here's the missiles. Zenith missiles, power needed, zero megawatts, crew needed, two people, durability, 20. Uh, so it's... There's the generator that's powering that missile, for example. We've got fuel tanks. We've got uh, rapid action fire suppression systems with liquid halon. Um, we've got armor around here. We've got landing gears and so on and so forth. This one is a lot more, uh, you know, a lot different. But anyway, uh, there's a lot to learn in this game. Uh, that's one of the bad things, I would say. The tutorial is sort of... It's very interesting. It does give you some ideas of what to do here and there. It learns you the basics, but a lot of the complex stuff, it just lets you to fiddle around with that. And you know, and I feel like a lot of the times it's too late. There's also a fair few bugs right now, but like I said, I, I feel like they're uh, probably taking care of that. For example, buying the fuel here for your fleet, you can buy it like this, and then you go, la 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 la, I'm gonna buy this. Oh no, I won't. And you come back and you're like, wait a second, they haven't done it yet. And of course they haven't because it takes time to actually refuel your fleet. But you can actually buy it again and lose money again. Um, also, if you're if you're equipping your ships back in the equipment menu um, and you undo something, you won't actually get your money back. So, you know, th there's, there's a few bugs here and there, but nothing that I found which would be game-breaking. Uh, unless, of course, you were to undo so many times, you would lose all your money. Here is one where we can replenish our uh, ammunition. Um, so it tells you what, what this ammo can be used for. And I'm also running completely out of ammunition. So uh, not really sure how we're going to do this. No ships use that one. I usually just click through the stuff or I know that around here on these shelves, uh, we've got the ammunition that we can actually use. Uh, so, aircraft bombs, that's quite cool, missiles. Alright, let's exit here, and then exit again. Alright, so, there's a few parts to this game. I was actually completely flabbergasted to learn, as I played, that there's not just combat, there's also the resupplying, building of the ships, repairing of the ships, as you can see it'll take 26 hours. Uh, we also got a refuel. I can press and hold shift and we're refueling in the meantime. Tarkan, sir, we've intercepted the radio transmission. Pick up the phone quickly. Choose the band. Now turn the knob until you have the signal. So this is a little mini game here you can play or it's pretty good to play it. There we go. Great, we have the signal. Now we need to determine their bearing. Turn the antenna knob using the mouse wheel. Find the direction with the strongest signal. If you're sure this is the right direction, press the button to save your calculations. There we go, so I can save that. It's a transmission from the enemy strike group, and it's uncoded. Course southeast, go on the route to Kushan... What? Where? Now we know their bearing and destination. Oh, so it's just on the route to Kushan. Strike groups are powerful enemy ship formations that hunt you. The best course of action is to avoid them at all times. Ah, Kushan. Okay, yeah, fine. They're going to Kushan. Excellent. We'll outmaneuver them. Now, Duke, take the ships and go Ur by the way of Hamat. We'll take off as soon as we're ready, Admiral. So, yeah. Uh, it's not just combat. It's also doing all of this stuff. These minigames, uh, detecting where the enemy strike group is. Um, you can also send your ships in advance past, you know, from your fleet to attack stuff. Uh, I haven't even touched any of this stuff, the missile control, um, or this. Uh, you can zoom out to see where you are. So they're going, they're going to Kushan or from Kushan. I'm not really sure. Uh, and we have, we have to go to Hamad. Well, we have to go to Ur, but we have to go to Hamad first. So in this as in this aspect, it's like uh, FTL. I started at Eli, you know, and then you 
go here and here and so on and so forth and you refuel in the meantime because this blue circle is how much fuel we have so i can press and hold shift and that will cause us to refuel but speaking of and i know i know i babble so much we'll get to the combat soon enough but i have to say this i was <laughs> i was completely taken by surprise that after going to ur i think or hamat i'm not sure which one I successfully did what I had to do, and then I got a I got an interesting cutscene which said that our capital got nuked or something to that effect, and I was like, uh oh, we're gonna be on our own now. Wait, what's Omelka oh, still has that much fuel? Okay, and I thought to myself, uh oh, we're gonna be on our own, and then it said game over, and I thought to myself, what? How did I lose? And yes, apparently something happened. I have no idea what. I guess I took too long here repairing the ship because it got heavily damaged that you know it doesn't explain to me what happened so i'm guessing i shouldn't wait for all of this repair to take place i should just go grand duke if we take off now we won't be able to repair the ships in full understood belay that order okay well we'll 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 save i mean uh we'll we'll wait so basically there's not much to do apart from you know catch more radio signals later on because um yeah the enemy uh, task groups or strike groups are moving about in the meantime. Also, I should note that... Oh yeah, listen to this now. I should note that... Um, what did I want to say? Well, that not just the graphics are absolutely wonderful. I absolutely love how this game looks. But it also sounds great. It's got some very nice music, atmospheric music... And it's got some amazing sound effects. And they're not just for show. Uh, in combat, as you'll see, especially now that I'm, you know, a complete beginner here. Um, it's, uh, it's very good that there's a lot of sound cues which will tell you what's exactly going on with your ship. And whether there's a missile coming on, you know, uh, locked onto you and so on and so forth. Uh, because there's so much going on in combat you really don't have that much time to look at the ui to be completely honest and there's another problem let me speed things up a little bit there's another problem with combat is that i believe the the developer has said that they will tone down or have the ability to tone down effects and such but it is just chaos there are so many beautiful admittedly beautiful absolutely exquisite looking uh effects going on um you know, but you just get completely lost sometimes uh, trying to hit the enemy. We, I'll show you. We need to make sure the enemy strike group never learns of our movements. To keep our locations safe, we must destroy the garrison in Hamad before uh, they can sound the alarm. Our cruiser is too slow. It is unsuitable for a surprise attack. We need to form a group of, uh, of our fast ships and use them to attack the enemy. Here you can use the, uh, see the chance that a sudden strike will succeed with the current group. So 0%. Choose the fastest ship in your squadron, based on their speed stat. So, 307 will do. Do they have rockets? Hopefully they do, because otherwise I'm gonna be in trouble. Excellent. The group is now ready. Now send it to Hamad. Move the cursor to Hamad and press left. There you go. Once the group has completed its mission, order it to rejoin the squadron. I would, but I don't know. So, look at this. You see these trails? How nice that looks. And look, now they're actually going, these two. And it's two trails, of course. And this is what I wanted to say. Not only does it look beautiful, sound beautiful, play great, uh, with a few caveats in combat. Quite a few caveats. I will get to that as we combat. Uh, but there's also an extensive backstory to all of it. And to be completely honest, with all of the names and empires and, and, and you know, princes that, princes this, combat this, uh, I'm, I'm a bit lost. I still don't know whether i'm the empire whether you know <laughs> i think i'm like a prince uh but i'm in the military so i have to you know i'm a subordinate to the admiral um but yeah there, there's a lot to to go uh, there's a lot to learn so anyway let's wait for these guys to arrive there at the enemy and now combat will start now considering you can actually get bombs and such it seems that um you can actually do bombing runs later on and such, but I haven't gotten to that yet. But look at this. You, you see this? Does that not remind you of the Dune stuff? I love it. I just love 
the look of this game. And this, before the every battle, it, it seems like you get a little piece of a tutorial as well, where you can, you know, it says drag and drop. Before a battle, you can change the order of your ships and so on. So we've got two enemies, a lightning and a jaguar, or jaguar, uh, RZO. Uh, I don't know what they do, but they probably have missiles. And we only have two intrepids. So, apologies in advance. This is going to be very chaotic. I'm probably not going to be explaining much, but I'm I'm probably going to start on the right or on the left. It, it, we're going to blink for a moment, and then I'm going to try to hit the enemy ships. I have two missiles on each of these intrepids, and I will try to take them out without taking too much damage or destroying my ship. So we're here on the right. You see that? With WASD, you can move around. The sounds are just fantastic. So where are they? Where are they? Because down on the ground will also have will also have missiles going at us. There we go. Let's shoot a missile. Oh freaking hell! Okay, it's one of the problems. Let's restart. You can restart every combat like this uh, ad nauseum <laughs> if it's if it's not going right. Now we're on the left. Uh, my missile decided to. Um, well, smash into me, so that wasn't very good. There's a missile coming. That's that beep beep. And there it is. We'll try to outmaneuver it. And now, push the engine to the max, and there we go. Come on, missile. Get him. We got a fire, so I press B. And I'm trying to hit them. Oh, we're gonna get. Whew. But you you hear all the all the stuff going. We don't want to retreat just yet. See, one of the problems with trying to hit these guys is that oh, we actually destroyed it. Uh, is that it's very guess it's very much guesswork. And of course, if you get to the top here, you kind of run out of space to see where you're going. Oh, whoa. what was that guy shooting? On the top left, you see our ammo being... Um... No. Come on. Come on. Very slow, uh... Reloading, but we do have some heavy stuff going in here. Oh, what? I, they, they must have burned up, actually. Okay, so this was a victory. Let me say, combat is not easy in this game. You have one advantage, and you saw that little retreat thing. If you fly to that, you can actually escape. Um, the cool thing is, uh, while you're... Can I tell these guys to go back? Um, how do I do that? Tarkin, sir, it appears we don't have enough fuel for the next leg of our journey. We'll have to return to the city and purchase fuel there. That's fine. Okay. So we have to land, which we do by clicking this. Can I do this? No. Um, and you go to a mini game where you select which ones you want to land. There's also s something to do with radiation. So I'm assuming we go through radi irradiated lands and such. It's quite interesting. You can see that this one doesn't have the missiles anymore. And what I wanted to say is, if I got if I got stuff blown off, I, I could have like the an engine destroyed, so we would be much less maneuverable or unmaneuverable. I could have one of the landing gears. I got one of the landing gears destroyed in one of my combats, and I, I had a hard time landing then. So now, when you're landing at a place, you basically get a mini game. A lander, where you're, you see, you're trying to get the highest number possible. But look at how beautiful this game looks. It's just, it makes me sick. It's so beautiful. Look at this, and look at the fire. Look at the fire impacting the ground. Look at how nice this all is. It's just, I have, I don't think I've ever seen a pixel graphics game. Well, it's not really pixel graphics, I suppose. Or a 2D game look this beautiful. It is disgustingly beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. Look at this. And, and you know, make no mistake, you can actually cause damage here with these ships as well. You can, you can tear components off and so on. 
But yeah, the, the higher the higher the number you land on, the more uh, like repair speed percentage you get and things like that. And there's the flickering, by the way, so pr please be very careful with that if you're uh, sensitive. Um, so now we have to repair all of these components here. It'll take a while. We can we can select what how much we want to repair so let's repair all of it for now this one does not oh no what happened to your landing gear we'll just repair that all right so let's go to the supplies uh we can drag the fuel yeah but wait a second the the cruiser is not here yet so I, i'm guessing i'm buying stuff in advance and of course i'm running out of ammo now i mean um money so i'm not really sure how that's gonna work out but it doesn't matter because for some reason i lose the game but look at this is this not beautiful look there's our ships back there and that one ouch maybe that was what's happened to my landing gear <laughs> we just got off the line with the squadron any news from the capital not much the situation is still grim the rebels are firmly entrenched in kadim range a ridge it'll be a long while before we can drive them out and what of that reactor everyone's talking about does it really exist Everyone's talking? Piotr's voice trails off. He looks at you for several seconds in silence. You should probably ask the Admiral about that, Grand Duke. So, now we have to get our cruiser there as well. Oh, we got another signal. Let's see where they are. If you don't have a free-spinning um, mouse wheel, I'm not really sure how easy this is going to be to do. There we go. Travel speed 150 en route Kushan Melka. So they are going Kushan Melka. They're going to Melka where, where we were before and where our game has saved, by the way. Uh, I think you cannot save otherwise. You might think, oh, this is the save, but this is for the direction finder here. Um, I don't think it is possible to save unless the game tells you it's saved. And what's this? Click to read. Oh, oh no, that was that. That was what I uh, got. Okay, but I love. You hear the sound effects of, it, of the stuff refueling, and everything else. It's just so nice. But yeah, as you could see in combat, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's a lot of the times more guesswork than not trying to hit the enemy, because you've got that little pointer near your ship where you're going to shoot and a lot of the times especially with the auto cannons which shoot a lot of bullets at the same time there's so many explosions and glowing and and everything else that you can barely see anything so the enemy can still hit you of course but you're trying to find out where where is my mouse where is my you know everything else is that all we've refueled okay there we go and they're landing and these guys are now not refueling that's not good. We have to refuel here, but we don't have the money for that. <laughs> okay, what what happens now? Um. Yep. Well, well, that's it. Tarkan said it appears we don't have enough fuel. We'll have to return to the city. Well, um, yeah. I I suppose I can sell a ship. That kind of sucks. Um. So I'm gonna sell. One of these guys, I suppose. 12,000. Plus 12, what? 12 wrenches? See, that's the problem. The game, a lot of the times, doesn't tell you a lot of the things that you need to know. So you need to just learn them. But, especially now when, when we're going to go here, it's just going to say, oh, you know, no one knows what might be waiting for us, Duke. Should I get, uh, should the going get tough? I ask. I ask that you request reinforcements from the admiral. And become a laughing stock. Don't ever think. Don't even think about it, General. Rest assured, General, I would never put my men at risk just to save face. I'm glad to hear that, Duke. I should also mention at this point. Oh, should you require reinforcement, just use the internal comms to contact the admiral. I should at this point uh, note that you also apart from all of this other stuff 
the combat, the wonderful graphics, the sound effects, um, this strategic play here, the buying of the fuel, the ammunition, the repairing of ships, the, the outfitting of the ships, you also have a dialogue system and reputation system. Sometimes you have to negotiate with NPCs. I had to negotiate with someone in Kalhu, I think, and I had little cards of speeches. And, and as I spoke to him, trying to get his support for, um, you know, to, to have him join us, um, I found out stuff about him. Uh, so it, it even started with my greeting. And because I greeted him him with like uh, peace be with you or something some some sort of religious greeting I think, uh, we, you know he was very happy about that and we found out that he is a strong religious supporter, so you know the game told us that and and so now then you can play on that strength of knowing what the guy likes, try to get under his skin and uh, get him to join up. Uh, it's just insane. So yeah, there's also a reputation system. I don't know where exactly I could show you that right now, but you have like a reputation system with the the empire and the factions, and it's just insane how much there is in this game. Uh, you know, it's difficult to explain, and this is a really difficult fight here. And last time, I'm really pissed off because I actually did it, but then. The, the game has said, well, you lose. I was like, what? Why do I lose? So. Prize ship. Transport ship will surrender if you destroy the, his escort. I have never seen that uh, transport. Try not to damage the transport so that it can be sold for a good price. So. I'm going to use the Nomad here, even though this is a support cruiser. But the thing is, this thing is loaded with missiles. All of these are missile launchers. Uh, it also has some special sort of missiles. It has some giant cannons, which are awesome. Um, so this is the, you know, from left to right, this is the order we will fight with. And I want missiles. I find that missiles are pretty much my crutch. Uh, they really allow me to take out stuff much more quickly. Uh, these guys are quite armored. All right. <sighs> Let's do this. I love the game. I love... Oh, auxiliary artillery. In addition to its primary cannon, the ship is an auxiliary cannon system. Use auxiliary weapons to eliminate fast, agile targets in close range and destroy enemy missiles in the air. To fire your auxiliary weapon, press the right mouse button. By the way, if I press shift and hold shift, that uh, super boosts the engines. But if you do it for a couple seconds, it overheats them and shuts them off. So, missiles. Yeah! Power! Look, look at that. Air-to-air -air missiles, AAM. These missiles are expensive and can only be used once, but they work wonders against agile air targets. To launch an air AA missile, press C. So we've got a missile coming as well. There we go. We destroyed it. See, I can't, I can't see where I'm trying to shoot. Ah, crap. This, this game just looks so beautiful. Oh, nice. But it's so impossible to see anything. There's the missile. Oh, that's actually... That's a ground target. Oh, nice. There's a missile. I shot my own missile down there. There's more of them coming, of course. The enemy has been destroyed. Come on. It's so much of a guesswork trying to hit stuff. Come on. I'm out of missiles, so that's good. I'm gonna use one of those expensive ones. Oh, wow! That's what it did. I love the sounds. There we go. And those are the uh, escape pods, by the way. You can also have your crew escape. And there's morale as well, by the way. There's just so much in this game. It's, it's absolutely insane. 
There we go. You don't have to destroy the uh, ground targets, by the way. Oh, that was victory already. That might have looked like, oh, what are you talking, Metal Canyon? This game is not difficult. That was my best ship I had, and it's probably heavily damaged. And if you've, well, you didn't notice because you're not looking at me or not here. I, only a couple times did I glance at the ammo UI. Pretty much nothing else I was looking at because I'm trying to concentrate, trying to hit things. So, now we're actually landing. And to spare you the, you know, not to go through it, I'll just land with the Nomad. Now, here's the thing. I don't yet know, this is not something explained in the tutorial. If I only land with the, this one, for example, will the Nomad still be able to be repaired? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. What about the Intrepid? Will it get its rockets back if it doesn't land? I have no idea. Let's just land with this one. Uh, we'll go for that 44 one. This thing might be too large, though. Look at how cool this is. Yeah, it's... Oh, only the armor is heavily damaged. And the uh, radar up top. Look at that. That's so cool. Yeah, that's... that's. We're not going to land there, unfortunately. Uh, let's land over here, then. There's also Q and E, which rotates or rolls the ship. Let's try to land like this. Get a 10, which is not great, but... There we go. How cool is that? Come on! This game is just... Uh-oh. As we enter the city of Ur, a large crowd of people welcomed us as heroes with cries of joy. Congratulations, Duke. What a glorious victory. Well done, Mark. Now all the naysayers will have no choice but to shut their mouths. I swear even Daud will rejoice in today's success. Thank you, Pyotr Ignatyevich. Shall I report to the Admiral? Certainly. Why wait? That was the moment when we realized that the hearts of the people of Gerrit were on our side. What a beautiful day it was. We celebrated our victory in the present without a care in the world for what lay ahead of us. So now... I don't know. Maybe this is... Uh, I don't know. By order of high command, remain in Ur and await further instructions. I have been ordered to return to our point of origin. No explanation provided. On the morning of the sixth day, the observation station reported a large vessel approaching from the south. All our forces were put on high alert. Yep, I lost again. Uh, I, I don't know if this is intended or not. It was a lone ship approaching slowly and showing no signs of aggression. Hope began to spread. You know, and so on and so forth. I don't want to spoil it for you, but, you know, look at this. It's got beautiful art, beautiful graphics, beautiful sound. Gameplay is amazing. It's just everything. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a roguelite. Gentlemen, I have assembled you. Oh, wait, what? This time it wasn't game over. Okay. Um, my opinion is this. We must press on and continue our advance towards Kiva. Pyotr Ignatovich, the news from the capital has rendered this entire operation moot. We must return to the motherland at once. The sooner the better. On the contrary, thinking Kiva is more important than ever, if you would allow me to el elucidate. I've had had several reports, uh, lengthy conversations with the crew of the Sevastopol. It pains me to say this, but I'm convinced that the war in the south is lost. Returning to the motherland will spell certain doom for us. We all had similar suspicions. Now... The, those fears had been put into words, many of the officers averted their gaze. Then what do you propose, Pyotr? There was exhaustion in Dodd's voice. The rebel fleet is currently engaged in heavy combat in the south. Now is the time to mount an offensive in the north and then Kiva by force. And what comes next? We'll just delay the inevitable. Sooner or later they will come to Kiva. I have reason to believe that our intel on the reactor is accurate. If we can seize it, they won't fight back. They will come to the bargaining table to ensure that the reactor is intact. Perhaps we might be able to strike a deal. Pyotr looked around as the officers considered his words. We have to send a vessel to re-establish communications with the capital. Once we have a reliable line to the south... There's no time for that, Sharif Ramatovich. If we do not mount an assault on Kiva here and now, it will be too late. We spent the rest of the night and the entire following day discussing Pyotr's plan. Eventually, we agreed to send the cruiser Diana to the south in a bid to re-establish communications with the Empire. The rest of our forces hastily began preparations to reach Kiva and assault it. The Sevastopol became the flagship of the new squadron. Awesome. At some point, an officer asked who would command the offensive. Pyotr readily replied with a plan of his own. 
He stood up and spoke with confidence. No one yet knows what has befallen the Emperor, he said. So the Grand Duke, the sole legitimate heir of the dynasty, must lead what remains of the Romani fleet in this offensive. So we are Romani, okay. Anyway, I'm not gonna go forward. Uh, it, I think it could be quite interesting story-wise, but it, I think, I, I hope I've given you a small glimpse into the beauty, uh, beauty of this game. Yes, there's a few caveats. Uh, definitely needs options to tone down the glowing and explosions or to make it more readily available where you're pointing. Um, maybe some sort of slight aiming assists, not in the game actually aiming for you, but, um, you know, leading targets, maybe some sort of computerized heads-up display that, that can uh, aid you in that. Otherwise, it's, it's a case of come closer and blast them. Um, and definitely needs to tone down the, you know, distortions and such. I believe that's already in the works. Anyway, uh, the game is also difficult, as you can see. And also the bugs need to be ironed out. But I love, love, love the looks. I love the sound of it. I just love this thing. It's amazing. It's something I always wanted, but didn't know I wanted, apparently. Because I didn't know it was possible to make such beautiful things. <laughs> anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this little preview, and, uh, yeah, hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.